All right, good evening everybody. So it's uh, two o'clock in the morning here in Cyprus at the moment and uh, I've actually managed to get some imaging started. The uh, last couple of days I've um, been trying to get the telescope set up and aligned in the dome. I had a few problems there with uh, the mount just being miles out and the alignment with the, the, the dome tra rotation and there was a few other uh, teething problems just trying to get it all set up and uh, that was in amongst battling all the cloud and everything as well uh, but nevertheless tonight the cloud broke uh, around about dinner time and uh, I thought well let's get get it set up so uh, here I'm actually logged into the, the observatory at the moment uh, I went out and got a, a new laptop uh, the one that I was trying to use and uh, my original one were really just uh, not up to scratch so uh, I replaced them and uh, I'm using Google's remote, Chrome's remote desktop which uh, I really like uh, it works well uh, unfortunately at the moment my internet sorry my Wi-Fi wi connection to the observatory is a little bit uh, poor particularly when the, the laptop is um, got its lid closed as it does at the moment just to minimise stray light off the screen when I'm connected uh, but you can see uh, I've actually got the wireless camera set up as well so this is the TP-Link TAPO uh, camera uh, the 1080 uh, Full HD and uh, pan and tilt features on it so I can actually control the camera uh, with my phone uh, so at the moment you can see we're sitting looking at the rotator and that allows me just to see when the, when the dome is trying to synchronise with the telescope although I can actually hear it uh, as well through the audio uh, so if I go into my phone app as you can see here I can uh, slew the camera around onto the desks and we can see there I can go back onto the scope and down onto the mount and these are the fixed positions that I've got uh, set up at the moment and obviously I can uh, pan and tilt anywhere I want uh, around inside that dome which is great uh, particularly the audio I can hear things grinding and crunching and stretching and knocking and all the animals outside but uh, I'll be really pleased with that camera so anyway I here we are in uh, the CPWI software for Celestron and uh, I used the, the Star Sense manual calibration mode uh, the, with the dome rotation uh, it doesn't rotate quick enough and there's no pause on the automatic Star Sense so uh, I just run it in manual mode which allows you to just slew to any point in the sky and then just tell it to uh, play it solve uh, that location and you can see the, the crosses, the orange crosses is where I've actually done calibration points uh, within the, the sphere of the sky and at the moment I'm currently sitting on M101 so if we go across to a PhD I managed to acquire a declination of 0.7 arc seconds uh, error and uh, the right ascension is at 0.86 given an overall 0.94 which isn't too bad uh, particularly on the declination side of things I've still got some further tweaking to do with the polar alignment uh, of the mount uh, but nevertheless I am getting good steady guiding there and uh, I'm do currently doing 300 second exposures uh, on M101 uh, but the interesting thing to see you can't see it so much at the moment but uh, there are periodic spikes they, they seem to have died off a bit but uh, there were periodic spikes uh, on the trend and that aligns with the uh, the rotation of the dome kicking in and uh, just put a little bit of disturbance into the focus uh, of the of the mount uh, which doesn't seem to cause any problems in terms of uh, the guiding 
Yeah, but it does show that uh, even that slightest movement on the dome is enough to put vibration through into the mount. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did expect that. I don't expect it to be perfect when it's all just on a wooden structure. Uh, it's particularly noticeable if I'm in there moving around, but that doesn't really matter when I'm doing remote and observing. And uh, I'll maybe have a look at uh, cutting a hole in the floor and uh, putting a pier in. But at the moment, let's just see how things uh, pan out uh, in the short term. Okay, so if we nip across the APT, and here we can see M101. It's uh, currently on exposure number 24 of 50. I've set it up so uh, the, the 50 exposures takes me through to, uh, I think it was uh, at the same time, roughly quarter past four in the morning, just as uh, the galaxy is transiting down below 30 degrees. Uh, around roughly four o'clock in the morning so we uh, took a few shots just beyond that and we'll see how we get on I can't remember if it'll run into a, a palm tree at the bottom of the garden at that time but uh, well we'll see how it goes anyway so I'll be pretty pleased with how that's coming out so far uh, 300 seconds exposures with a gain of 150 and that's using the ASI uh, 2600 color camera and uh, I'll see tomorrow uh, how things have gone uh, during the night, uh, but uh, certainly looking at the screen there, uh, the image looks not too bad. Uh, this dark area at the bottom, I believe that is the prism uh, from the off-axis guider. I didn't rotate the camera around to put the, uh, the prism in the corner, but uh, we'll see how well how that goes. And uh, once I get some uh, calibration flats and darks, and uh, stack all that, we'll, we'll see what comes out of it. So tomorrow, I, I'm going to maybe, depending on what the weather forecast looks like, I'll maybe try and get some more uh, on 101 tomorrow. I, I'm failing that, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can get up with the, the processing and uh, see what's come out so far. But uh, in the meantime, I'll, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how it's gone. So uh, I'll catch you in a bit. And we'll come back to it again. All right then, so last night was the second night of data gathering on M101 and uh, it didn't go too badly, but it also had its problems. Uh, after a day of uh, beer and barbecue, I uh, went out and set up around about half past nine, something like that. I uh, set off the system and then uh, I went to check everything uh, around about half past 11, I think it was and uh, it tried to do a meridian flip and, and failed miserably so it completely lost the target and didn't know what it was doing so I had to stop and uh, reset everything up again uh, and then I just left it to run from probably back at midnight through until uh, four o'clock half past four this morning uh, when one on one was meant to be just dropping past uh, 30 degrees so I've loaded up all the images here in Pixon Sites Blink and uh, I ran through all the images, filtered out uh, the ones I was going to keep and try and process and obviously discarding everything else. So in total uh, I had 103 five minute exposures and uh, of that, uh, that was reduced down to 35 exposures. Uh, as you'll see through running through the blink, uh, the first half uh, are from the ones the previous night. Uh, where I took 50 exposures and then uh, the second half were from last night. So uh, it started off not too bad in the evening. Uh, let's just run through this. And you'll see that there's quite a transit of uh, lights to darks and star trails and satellites and all sorts of stuff. So. Uh, I think that we had uh, a couple of issues, uh, uh, excluding the Meridian Flip one. We had uh, high clouds start to develop, I think, through the night. And uh, I'm also not 100% sure that the dome alignment was uh, correct with the opening of the dome in, in relation to the telescope. I've noticed that the extended use, uh, the next dome software, seems to hang up or disconnect or the ASCOM driver seems to crash or whatever it was so uh, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on but it's something uh, that I'll need to have a look at further or maybe it's just uh, the current quality of the software I don't know. 
So anyway, that was everything that we'd picked up in uh, the process through Blink, or cleaned up and discarded through Blink. So I'll close that. So then ran it through DSS, and uh, I think I kept, uh, of the 35 or of whatever it was, uh, I ended up with 35 uh, images, and this was the autosave uh, that came out of GIMP, uh, came out of, not GIMP, um, Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, so that was the starting point, so that was with a uh, straightforward uh, dynamic crop just to pull out the edges and uh, you can see uh, we've still got a bit of vignetting around the image and uh, as I mentioned I think it was yesterday uh, in the lights, we can sorry, in the, in the flats we can particularly notice this dark spot at the bottom of the image which I think is the prism uh, from the off-axis guider so uh, next time I'm going to move it off to a corner or, or maybe pull back the height of the prism. Uh, at the moment I don't think it's actually obscuring into the uh, field of view of the of the main camera, but nevertheless we are seeing uh, that pattern uh, forming. So after taking it through from DSS, uh, I ran through uh, the various uh, stages in Pixinsight, a automatic and dynamic background instructions, and then a curves, uh, and then I also did a um, easy, or whatever it's called, uh, easy processing suite uh, denoise. And I also use the auto script uh, dark enhance uh, scripts, and uh, then a little bit of uh, tweaking uh, again on the on the curves. I think it was on the saturation, and uh, ultimately this is where I have got to. So I'm happy with that at the moment. Uh, I might do some more playing around, but this was only with uh, lights and flats. There's no darks being uh, captured. Uh, I might go and do that for the next one, but this was, this was really just to see how things were, were going. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that image has come out. And uh, just to the, an example of progression, so this image here that I'm way to open up was uh, the same target, M101, that I took just after starting uh, with my 8-inch Newtonium a year ago. And obviously I haven't had a lot of time under the scope over the last year with being away extended periods due to COVID uh, but I think it's clear to see uh, that there is a significant difference between uh, my first attempt at capturing 101 last year and then uh, where we are today uh, from the, the images captured. It's a shame that I had so many uh, images discarded uh, but uh, nevertheless I'm happy with that. So on that note Thank you very much for watching and as usual I look forward to reading your comments and uh, interacting with you uh, down in the comments so don't forget to, to, to drop me any questions, queries or uh, tips that you may have and uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and it uh, really helps and motivates uh, to continue producing. And uh, in terms of what's next I don't know but uh, we'll check the forecast for tonight I might go out and do something else but uh, in the meantime that's M101. Uh, 34 uh, 5 minute exposures for a total integration time of 2 hours uh, 50 minutes and that's it so thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one